Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. We're going to start a walk and talk today and the topic is depression and Brother in Christ asked, you know, is there a relation between the Bible and depression and how the worldly science is trying to say depression is bad for your brain and we're just going to talk about I'm going to link a good study by King James Video Ministries and on depression in the Bible is a great teaching and I like it and I actually love the teaching so I'll be linking that below now I'll usually I usually link depression with sorrows okay two types of sorrows in the Bible okay. you have godly sorrow and you have worldly sorrow now how does godly sorrow work well we have sorrow when we sin but that sinful nature, that sorrow of, you know, someone once said we're two-thirds redeemed. Our bodies are still not redeemed. We have that sorrow that we're still in this body of flesh and we're going to make mistakes and we're going to fail the Lord. And we have that sorrow when we looked at the world, the lost world. We're vexed by the lost world, but we look at the lost world and we see, man, there's just so many people going to hell. They reject Jesus Christ. And we have depression seeing how bad things are getting out there. We get depressed. Brothers and um, brothers and sisters, we have family members that we want to see get saved. Friends that we love that we want to see get saved. And anytime you try to talk to them, they tear you down. They ignore you. You get, I almost want to say excommunicated. Uh, basically, you just get thrown out of their lives. They don't want anything to do with you. And it gets depressing. And that's worldly sorrow, or godly sorrow, in the sense that it has to do with salvation. And, you know, we just, sometimes you got godly sorrow in the sense that uh, you have trials and tribulation that's going to happen in your life as a Christian. When you get saved, sorry about that. When you get saved, depression isn't going to be gone like that. Okay, I, I'm saved now. I'm never going to be depressed again. Um, you're going to be depressed. Uh, there's times where you're going to be so depressed that, and this goes to what I'm going to point the answer to all depression, the, the best, the only true solution to all depression. But you get to a point where you're on your knees and you're just crying before the Lord, and that's the solution Jesus Christ. So I'll elaborate that in just a minute, but so that's godly sorrow. Worldly sorrow that leads to depression is, and I'm going uphill. <laughs> Got to finish walking downhill, I'm going uphill. But uh, worldly depression has to do with basically people love their sin. These guys are out. Usually I'll give them something, like grab some foliage some grass or something and I'll feed them. And they really want something today. You have worldly sorrow and what that is is people who love their sin, I'm talking about the lost side, you got people who love their sin and the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Um, and their life, uh, they think it's all great because they're running 90 miles an hour but you have that thing of like with the movie stars, they've got everything and yet they're blowing, they're blowing their brains out, uh, committing suicide. Um, they're living recklessly to the point to kill themselves. Uh, they're depressed. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. The Bible also says, if you live by the flesh, you shall die. Um, so you got world, worldly sorrow that will lead to depression, but that's depression of your own actions. Um, also, as a Christian, if you live by the flesh, you shall die. But also, even in life, when you make decisions, brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes you can make the wrong decision and it can lead to depression. The best example, let me a second. Okay, Victoria's coming, my dog. Um, you can be depressed by your actions. Best example of this is you get all excited and you're like, you got a good job and you go out and you buy a brand new car uh, let's say brand new truck. They're so expensive today. I was looking at them. They're anywhere between forty to sixty-five grand for a truck, and I was just 
my jaw dropped. I'm like, is that how expensive vehicles, brand new vehicles are getting today? I've been getting used ones. And I got a used truck for five grand, had to fix it up. And you buy that truck, you're so excited. Then you're like, well, here's this home I want. It's kind of expensive, and but I can afford it with my budget. So I'm gonna get a loan on that house. So you get the loan on the house. You got two credit cards. Well, you know, I got a good job, so we can go ahead and put some money on the credit cards to make these trips that are amazing and fun. Next thing you know, you're in debt. And your job, let's say you lose your job and you have to get another job that barely pays the bills, all the debts, all of a sudden now you got depression. Now, is that good depression? People say depression period isn't good, but I'm talking about is that depression that you have to go through because of this life or is that depression that you're putting on yourself from your own actions? Uh, that's depression you're putting on yourself for your own actions. So there's two types of depression. There's depression that's led on by godly sorrow, uh, just how we live this world, being so sick and tired of this body of flesh, our sinful nature, and you know, the sorrows of all the people around us that we care about that reject Jesus Christ, they're going to hell. Uh, the sorrows of, godly sorrows of preaching the gospel even. Because today, I mean, the, I understand we just celebrate over one person who gets saved, but it's more evident today why that is than it was back then in the past. A lot of people were getting saved in the past. But today, it seems, it seems like an even greater miracle today when one person gets saved today. And you go out there and you try to hand gospel tracts to people and you try to preach the gospel and it gets very depressing. There gets times where you just won't, don't want to go out there. They don't want to hear it. Lord, I don't want to go out there. Uh, what's the point of me investing in the gospel tracts or making gospel tracts and laying them out there? I mean, they don't want them. The world doesn't want anything to do with you, Jesus. And you get depressed. Godly sorrow. And God's going to be like, I know it's tough out there, and you start getting into his word, and you start reading about the ministry of reconciliation, and how we're ambassadors for Jesus Christ, and that picks you back up, depression's gone, and you're like, Lord, I'm getting back out there for you. And you get a good heart, you get excited, and you get right back out there. And then, yeah, later on, you get depressed, and it kind of goes back and forth. Um, and then worldly sorrow, there's a lot of things, mistakes I've made in my life, where I had depression, hardcore because of my own actions. And then in that depression, when I was a professing Christian, but I was lost, in that depression, I turned around and made another decision that was a bad decision, <laughs> you know? And it just collides. But as a Christian, it comes back to the last, second part of this solution for depression, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the solution to depression. You get depressed, brothers and sisters in Christ, you need to pick up that Bible and you need to read it. Okay. Uh, I don't care how you do it. Sometimes I'll just flip it open to a random page in the New Testament and read a chapter that's right there. Um, I've got my daily devotions that I do. And sometimes I'll listen to Alexander Scorby reading the Bible while I sit down on the deck. And it's important. It's very important to, to listen and read the Bible. Um, to take a break from whatever you're doing for even if it's just five minutes. Um, to actually listen when you're when you're fa facing depression. Um, some people say when you're depressed, you just get up and you keep yourself busy. Uh, that just masks the depression. Okay, when you stop and slow down, that depression's still there. Now you need to get in prayer. You can pray as you're working. You can listen to Alexander Scurry as you're working. But my encouragement and suggestion is to actually take some time out for five minutes read a chapter, say a good prayer to the Lord, even sing a hymn, third part. Memorize some hymns, memorize scripture, but sing a few hymns. Uh, take some time out of the day, even if it's the very morning, first point of the day, or the evening, or during the day. Take a time out in the day where you're giving it just to the Lord. It's not about the work that needs to get done. It's not about all the fun stuff you want to do. You just take some time out to spend time with the Lord. And that prayer, he loves the personal relationship. Talk to him about your depression, why you're depressed, what's going on in your life, um, what's going on around you that's causing you to be depressed. Talk to the Lord. And 
Jesus is the solution. But on a, like a, another part, you go to Jesus first. But roosters, eventually I'll get some chickens. But uh, the other thing you can do is I have an email test or email for prayer and testimony, and some brothers have gotten contact with me there to talk with me. And Brother Brian at King James Video Ministry has a P.O. box. And a lot of people are meeting each other. And they're giving each other their emails. Um, people write uh, S Sister Catherine, uh, women, writing, writing Sister Catherine, talking to them about things. So another thing, after you go to Jesus first, that you can do when you're depressed, talk to a brother or sister in Christ. I know it's very hard today because... There's very few of us, and we're far in between. We'd love to be able to just meet someone. Like, I would love to meet a brother in Christ at the beach and go for a walk and just talk with him. Listen to him talk, and also talk with him. Um, some people were like, you know, there's four-wheeling, two-wheeling, and they're like, yeah, we get together and do that, but that really doesn't help. You get on the four-wheeler and you take off, but you're not really talking. Talking about the Bible, talking about, you know, what's, you know, depressing you in this world and encouraging one another. So this ministry is all about encouraging the brethren to do what's right and to stand tall and to keep going. No matter how hard things get, how depressing things get, is to keep going. And if that depression is based off a mistake that you had made, to encourage you to deny yourself, pick up that cross, and follow Jesus. Pick up that cross daily. Deny yourself. Repent of what you did. Learn from it. That's what the picking up your cross is. You learn from it so you don't make that mistake again. And, you know, you do a 180, you turn from it, and you get your relationship with the Lord star, uh, picked back up where you left off. If you wrong somebody else, you do the same thing. You know, you repent. You tell that person, I'm sorry. All right, you pick up your cross. You do your best not to make that mistake again. And you follow Jesus. You pick up where you left off with that relationship with that person, that brother in Christ, that sister in Christ, your wife, a family member, if you're the one that was in the wrong. And, yeah, Jesus Christ is the solution to all our problems. And he always will be. So, I'll link the email again uh, that you guys can contact me if you need to talk when you're depressed. Uh, prayer requests, um, testimonies. The biggest thing I keep pushing about the testimonies, I don't mind hearing a testimony of salvation. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But it's not just for those testimonies. It could be a simple testimony that I think is great in a Christian's life on where he screwed up and God saved him and got him out of it, or her. Or a time where they wasn't their fault, but they were in need, you know. Um, and they prayed and God helped them. Um, they find something interesting in the Bible that day that had to do with exactly what they were going through. I mean, these are all testimonies to encourage the brethren, the brothers and sisters in Christ. So, if you're getting depressed, look to Jesus Christ. Okay? No matter what kind of depression it is as a Christian, look to Jesus Christ. We get to do that. The lost world, all we can do to them, for them is tell them about Jesus Christ. And if they reject Jesus Christ... They don't have him to look to. We do. So, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Grace and peace be with thee. From God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll keep you in my prayers. Uh, please keep me in your prayers. See you in the next video.